Welcome to Belgian Diecast Restorations. I'm Johan, and these are two very play-worn Majorette Volkswagen T2 vans, or Fougon as they are called in French. These 160 scale models were first produced by Majorette in 1973 and remained in production until 1981. There are quite a few variations, including an ambulance, a couple of police vans, several panel vans, and also several promotional vehicles. These models are very sought after, and mint condition boxed models fetch high prices. What we have here is a quite common cafe hack panel van with flaking paint and a dull window piece, and a less common but not rare military ambulance, which at one point has been painted over with several layers of green and even blue. There are scratches and even some small cracks in the window, and the beacon on the roof is broken off. I thought a long time about whether I would restore or customize these models. After some research, I decided to give both models a makeover based on actual service vehicles from the 60s and 70s. I also decided to do this in a two-part video, one for each model. In this first video, I will tackle the military ambulance. Actually, the first model produced in this range by Majorette was a French ambulance. The Volkswagen T2 was widely used as an emergency vehicle all over Europe back in those days. The Belgian Red Cross also drove T2 ambulances from the late 60s up to 1981. And this is the picture that inspired me for this model. So let's get the tools out and convert this major T2 into a Belgian 70s ambulance. These Majorette Volkswagen vans are not riveted. The base plate is just clipped in by the headlights in the front and the license plate in the back. The best way to remove it is to carefully wedge a screwdriver in the rear, prying away the license plate. In the base plate we find the patented Majorette suspension with a U-formed suspension rod. I pry it loose and remove the wheels. They will be replaced by brand new Volkswagen van wheels. The suspension has some specks of rust and will spend a few hours in a bath of household vinegar. Next we have the interior with the patient and finally the window piece, which also holds the back door in place. There's a large and rather deep gash in the side window and a small crack in the windscreen. The small crack is almost invisible, but the gash will stand out. That's why I also take apart the panel van. The window piece is the same in all Majorette T2 models. This means that even the window units in the closed vans have side windows and you can easily swap them out. Now we have an ambulance with very nice side windows as they have been protected by the casting of the panel van. Nevertheless they are dirty. This is probably scale as a result of being submerged in water. Since our Belgian ambulance will be white, I will replace this green rear door with a white one I have in my spares drawer. The green and the white doors are both flecked with paint, as are the remaining window units. So these all go into liquid dental disinfectant. After about half an hour, the paint has loosened and I can brush the parts clean. The green door will go back into the parts drawer. The window units will be polished later. The bottom plate also had its share of paint, but luckily this just wraps up with a toothpick and will be completely gone when we're done with the wire brush later on. The body of the van goes into the caustic soda to remove all those layers of paint. When it comes out, we have 100% paint removal. Then I wirebrush the casting to prepare it for painting. However, before we can start painting, we'll have to do some customization to the body. One of the features on the real-life ambulance is a dome-shaped vent on the roof. I found this rivet button for clothing, which looks about the right size. I remove the button from the post, then I carefully measure the position of the vent and drill a hole in the roof for the base of the button to go through.
Now I can glue the vent in the roof with super glue and baking soda. Finally everything is ground and filed away to make the inside of the roof flush again. Since the casting doesn't have anything to hold on during painting, I glue a nail inside the roof for the forceps. Since the ambulance will be painted white, I prime the body in Vallejo white hobby paint. My can is almost empty and is struggling. Later on I apply a second coat from a new can. The casting then gets two coats of Motip high gloss white. After the color coat, I give the indicators and the tail lights a coat of Molotov chrome. This functions as a mirror base. The indicators then get a coat of Tamiya clear orange and the tail lights are painted in the right configuration of orange, red and white. Finally everything gets a couple of coats of AK interactive gloss varnish to give the model that final gloss shine. As the paint dries I can take care of the plastic parts. First of all the interior has yellowed with deep brownish spots. In my video on the Corgi Rootmaster I explain what makes this happen. I give the interior a bath in hydrogen peroxide and leave it under a UV light. Most of the yellowing disappears after about 8 hours, but the brown spots are very stubborn. The part needs a full 30 hours of UV light until only a very faint outline of the spots remains. Not perfect, but a lot better. The window unit has returned from the vinegar and the scale is gone. It almost looks like new and just needs a good polish. I use plastic polish for car headlights to buff out tiny scratches and imperfections until the windows are clear again. Our real ambulance has partly missed its side windows. In order to achieve this effect, I tape off the top part of the side windows with masking tape. Then go over the inside with 1200 grit wet sandpaper to make the bottom two thirds of the windows cloudy. Removing the masking tape reveals a sharp line between the mist glass and the clear part above. Now it's time to address another issue. Since this window unit was sourced from a panel van, it doesn't have a roof beacon and the beacon on the other windscreen was destroyed anyway. I got these nice blue beacons from model car parts in the Netherlands. This beacon will not go through the hole in the roof as this will look unnatural. Instead it will sit on top and attach to the window unit inside. 
I use a sharp 2mm drill and make a hole in the top of the window piece into the center of the mark where the beacon should have gone so I can fit the rod of the beacon later on. I drill the hole by hand to avoid cracking the window unit. The base of these beacons was always painted to match the vehicle. So I mask off the top of the new beacon and give the base two coats of gloss white enamel paint to match the white of the ambulance. The suspension came out of the vinegar and just needs a good polishing with the wire brush to look all shiny again. Now I can install the new wheels. These are very nice 164 scale Volkswagen wheels made by Greenlight. Since this ambulance is a 160 scale model, the wheels are slightly smaller. But this won't be a problem. After all it will be a great improvement to the large bulky Majorette wheels. The green light wheels came complete with new axles, but these are way too large to fit the wheels without drilling out the holes. And the majorette axles are 0.8mm anyway. I use the majorette wheels for reference. Then I cut two 0.8mm brass rods to size to make the new axles. Then I attach the wheels and fit the axles in place with the suspension rod. I don't glue the wheels just yet until I've done a test fit with the finished model. When the paint is cured and all the parts are cleaned and polished, I can reassemble the model. First I drop the window piece in place and fit the beacon on top of the roof. I put the rod of the beacon through the hole in the window unit. It's a good fit and it sits neat and tight. I won't glue it in place, otherwise I won't be able to remove the window anymore. I lift up the rear of the window to fit the rear door. Then comes the cleaned and brightened interior with the patient. First I slide in the headlights, then I carefully pry in the license plate until it snaps in place. Now that the ambulance is back together, I can apply the decals. Based on the very few pictures of these old Belgian Red Cross ambulances I found on the web, I reproduced the decals in vector software using the correct fonts. First I attach the Red Cross on both sides of the ambulance. Then comes the old and long obsolete 900 emergency number on the doors with the words Hulp Centrum, Centre de Secours, which means as much as emergency center. In Belgium we speak Dutch and French, so everything needs to be in both languages and both languages need to be treated equal. Therefore the Dutch and French text is alternated on both sides, with the French on top on the driver's side and the Dutch on top on the passenger's side. For the people who want to make their own Volkswagen T2 Belgian 70s ambulance, I will make my decals available on my Buy Me A Coffee page. They can be downloaded for a small fee. If you become a Belgian Diecast Restoration supporting member, you can download all my current and future decals for free. 
They are vector files, so they can easily be resized for larger or smaller models. And that's it for the Volkswagen T2. This military ambulance looked like it had been in a war, with dull and cracked windows, a broken beacon and covered under thick layers of blue and green paint. And this is what she looks like now in the 70s Belgian Red Cross livery. In my next video I will take care of the panel van, which will offer its own challenges. So don't forget to subscribe and ring the notification bell if you want to be notified when part 2 comes online. See you then!